Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a more advanced shirt in Blender 4.2. Now I've done these sort of cloth simulations before um, but oftentimes people ask me why do we have to make all these little segments here? Why not just add different shaders and colors to a solid piece like this? And the reason is without these individual little pieces we don't kind of get these seams and folds and it just adds more realism to actually make the segments. So it's a bit of extra work but the um, result is a lot better. I think. So what I'm going to do, I will also be providing this guy. Um, I'll explain that in a little bit so you can follow along with the exact same model. Um, but yeah, this is just a fun little thing to do. It's a little bit more advanced, but I think it's simple enough that you can follow along. And just one thing I want to mention, when I was recording this towards the end, the audio did cut out for the last five minutes. So I just had to remake that part and just kind of recap what I did. So it's just me kind of showing you what I did, some of the settings, but most of the shirt um, the audio captured fine, so it's it'll be still fine to watch the tutorial. And um, as always, I will be uploading the final result to my Patreon as well. Um, but the actual file to follow along with, I'll be providing that for free down in the description. So um, yeah, let's jump in and make a men's shirt in Blender. If you have your own animated character, that's completely fine. If you don't, you can just go into the description below and you can download mine that I've made available on Gumroad. You can come over here and just put in zero dollars so you can get it for free. If you want to make a donation, that's completely up to you, but you can go ahead and download that. The link is in the description. Now, once you have it downloaded, you're going to go ahead and just extract the zip folder and then just run the blend file that's inside. Now, if you're opening this in a new version of Blender, um, you might get a little thing that pops up that says um, to allow some sort of extension. You can just go ahead and allow that. And after that, you might also notice if you're running this in Blender 4.2 that the mesh looks kind of weird. Now, you might not have that issue, but if you do, it's just a bug. And all you have to do is just go into edit mode, press A to select everything. Just go over here to mesh, go to normals, and then just come over here and go split normals. Then go to mesh again with everything still active and go to normals and just go to merge. Now, if you tab back out, you can see the mesh looks all clean. And I know you might think that has nothing to do with the normals, but I can assure you that the normals are actually okay, the face orientation. So that's just a weird thing that happens sometimes um, if you open up mesh in a new version of Blender. So hopefully now you guys know how to fix that if that um, comes up in the future. Now, this already has a rig that I've already gone ahead and animated. So what happens here, if you just drag up here, you can see the timeline, just drag this up, okay? So it's just a T pose that starts like this and then it folds in. Now the only thing you have to do with your character once you have it animated is just make sure to go to your physics and just give it a collision. It's also important to note that your collision should always be underneath your armature, okay? So um, the animation happens first and then the collision. Otherwise your fabric will just kind of be sitting in space and not interacting and you wouldn't know why. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's just go to frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna start by laying out our shirt. So we're gonna go Shift A I'm gonna go to our mesh options and add in a plane. And with this plane here, we're gonna go G, Z and just move it till it's kind of like in the chest height here. And we're gonna go tab into edit mode. And I'm just gonna turn off proportional editing. If it's enabled, just make sure it's off. We're gonna go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. And then in our right orthographic view, we're gonna go G and then we're gonna go Y and just move it forward like so. And then let's go into the front view. And in the front orthographic view, let's go to our modifiers. Let's add a mirror. Enable clipping, and just in your front of a graphic view, grab this edge over here and go G, X, and just move it till it snaps in the middle. So now we have this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna enable my X-ray, or I might actually turn that off again and just go Z and go wireframe. Okay, I'll go to wireframe. You can do with whatever you choose. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this over here, and we'll kind of move this edge, once we have it here, around about with a neck and shoulder. So we'll kind of rotate it a little bit like so. And I'm just gonna go back into solid view. Then over here, I'm gonna go Control R, add in an edge. So double clicking to add it in. And I'm gonna come over here in the middle, Control R, click once and slide up an edge just to bring it to about here. So it's just underneath the arm. Then I'm gonna to go to my face select. I'm just gonna select this face over here and go X. I'm gonna delete that face. So now we have something that looks like this and we're just gonna roughly take this and move it over here. And then let's just grab this vertex, maybe move it down a little bit and then grab this one here, something like this. And with this done, you're gonna come over here in the middle here, you can go Control R, add in another edge, double click, 
come in here and go Control R in the middle here, double click to add in another edge. And then let's select this vertex and go X and delete that vertex. So now we have something that looks like this. I'm gonna just grab this vertex over here, bring it in here like so, and let's just bring this one out just a little bit more. And you can see this is the shape we have, okay? So this is roughly, these squares here are roughly the same size. But what we can do, we, this topology here isn't gonna help us out a lot. So what we can do, we can come over here and press K to get the cut tool. And this from the top here, just gonna come down to this edge, click here, click here in the middle, go up to here and then to this edge over here, and then hit enter. And then just select, um, with your edge select, just select this edge over here at the bottom of this triangle. And just press F3 and type in merge, and just go merge at the center, like this. Okay, so now we have the right sort of edge flow. I'm gonna go to my vertex select, just bring this vertex down. And once again, we wanna make sure that all of these squares are more or less the same size. And we can come over here now, control R, add one in here, a loop, bring this vertex more to the middle. There we go. And then we're gonna come over here, control R, and let's roll in three loops over here. That's cool. And then let's take this corner under the arm here, and let's just go G and move that up like so. Now, once again, we have that sort of weird um, corner meeting here. So what we can do, we can hit K to get the cut tool, cut from here to here, and then going across here, we make this triangle and then come to this edge over here. And then let's meet back up over here. Now we have this triangle. Let's just grab this edge over here. F3 and let's go merge at the center again. And now if you go control R and you hover over it, you can see the yellow line. So that's the edge flow we want. And over here we have the same edge flow. So let's now go over here, control R, double click to add an edge here. And over here you can see these are a little bit stretched. So to make them more square, we're gonna go control R, double click to add in an edge. Over here, control R, double click. Then over here, we're gonna roll in two edges, double click. So we're just trying to make all of these look like the same sort of size. Over here, we can go control R, roll in two edges, double click. And then instead of coming in here and going control R and rolling in two edges, which will make too many loop, um, which make it kind of uneven up here. What we can do, we can hit the K tool and up here where it's stretched, we can just come here and click, go down to the middle like so and add it in that way, going down. And now I'm gonna go over here, control R, double click over here as well. Over here, I'll roll two and over here, control R, roll in two. And then over here, just control R, let's roll two edges in here. So just more or less, we want this to be made out of the same sort of size squares. Over here where it stretches a little bit, you might just wanna correct it slightly like that. With that done, we're gonna press A to select everything. We're gonna right click and go subdivide even more. And you can come over here, get the smooth tool and just slightly drag and just slightly smooth it out. And then with our vertex select option here, let's enable proportional editing. And then let's just grab these corners where it's looking a little bit square and let's just round them out slightly. And let's do the same thing over here around the neck. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. So what we can do now is we can go shift alt and left click to select this edge running along here. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing. Then I'm gonna go E to extrude it out. Extrude out to about here. And once you have it out here, you're gonna go E to extrude and extrude it out to here, uh, to the top, and you're gonna rotate it slightly and go S, X, zero, and hit enter. And then let's just rotate it now again, just to level it up to this one here. And then we're gonna come over here and select these guys as well. So we have this thing here. We're just gonna go R to rotate it and just kind of move it over the arm, over here like this. There we go. And this should all more or less look even. So we're gonna come in here, control R, roll our middle mouse button and just add in some segments to make these look like roughly the same sort of shaped squares. So what we can do now is we're gonna to go to our materials tab and this is gonna help us stay a bit more organized. We're gonna go and create a new material. This is called a shirt. And let's go plus and create a new material and let's just call this seam or let's just call it space. Okay, it's gonna be our spacing. And with the spacing here, we're gonna come down to the viewport display and let's make this kind of like a blue color just so we can see it. And then look at our face select option. Over here, we're gonna go shift, alt and left click just to loop select these faces going down here. And we're just gonna assign that space material and we can see it's blue here because this is where we're gonna delete the faces, okay? And then over here at the bottom, 
I might just come here and grab this edge select. Just select this bottom edge and go E to extrude down just two more times. And then I'm going to select this edge over here. I'm going to go Control B just to create a bevel slightly like so. I'm going to click and I'm going to assign that space material like so. And then over here where the neck is, I'm just going to go Shift Alt left click on this edge. And I'm going to go Control B to bevel it slightly. I'm going to click and assign that space like so. And I might just grab these edges here and just kind of once again, just round them out a little bit, with proportional editing. It's not absolutely necessary, but I think it just looks a little bit better. And I might just bring the shoulder out just slightly. In fact, I think we'll give it even a little bit more. So I'm just going to move this just above the shoulders. Okay, so I know this was a bit of work, but the nice thing is you can now actually save this and you can always bring it into your blend file and use it as a template to make um, a shirt. Okay, so what you're going to do now, you're going to press A to select everything. And in your right view, you're going to go E to extrude and extrude it back, like so. So it's sitting at the back. And then you're going to press A to select everything, and you can go Alt N and make sure to recalculate the outside normals. That's super important. Now what we're going to do is you're going to go ahead and where the opening is here, you're going to select all those faces and go X and delete those faces. You're going to also do the same at the bottom. And then the inside of the neck here, going up to here, all of those faces, you can go X and delete those faces. And then Shift Alt left click and just select all of these faces here. And Shift Alt left click over here in the corner, just to select all of these faces like so. So pretty much all of these ones now, and we're going to go X, and this time we're going to go only faces. So the only faces still leaves us with the um, edges, but not the faces. And then now all we have to do is come here to the space and then click select and now it selects all of those seams for us. So we can go X and delete only faces like so. Pretty cool. Now let's tab back out. Let's make sure to save. Let's grab this cloth. Let's go to our um, physics, give it a, a cloth. Let's come down to the collision and make it self collision. Let's go up to the shape and enable sewing and let's make that 24 on the sewing strength. And now let's make sure we're at frame one. Let's hit the space bar. And we should see it all snaps on like so. How cool is that? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the shirt. I'm going to right click and just go shade smooth. Okay. And I'm also going to go to my modifiers. And I know this seems a little bit premature, but let's just go ahead over here. And let's go add modifier search and just type in sub and give it a subdivision surface. And then add modifier search. And let's just type in solidify. There we go. And let's just come here and let's just give it a bit of thickness going in to the inside like so. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And that's just going to help us see what's going on a little bit better. So let's go back to frame one. Let's select our shirt. And what we can do, we can go to our materials, click plus and go new. And let's call create a material called shirt two. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just select all of these extra little trim bits. Okay, like so, and maybe these ones over here. All the little extra bits of trim. And let's just assign that shirt to material. And so we can see it, let's just go to viewport display and give that a material. So I'm gonna give it like a red, for example. I'm gonna tab back out. I'm gonna go to frame one, hit the space bar again. And now we can see this is what we have. Pretty cool. And you can see that um, as it keeps going at a certain point, the arms fall down, but I'm going to pause now and you can see this is what we have. Okay. So the cool thing about this is that you can always, um, come to frame one, you can grab the shirt and at any point, because it's mirrored, you can always select any of these bits now in the front of a graphic view and just kind of move them and reposition them, right? Until you're more happy with the results that you're getting. So in this case, I might just want to select the shoulders here and I might just want to bring them out a little bit more. And it's always important to make sure you use the proportional editing. Okay. When you're doing this, but more or less, you can see this is sort of what we're going for. So I'm going to go back into object mode, go to frame one. I'm going to hit the space bar and I can see what I might want to change is just a gap over here. So I might just take these guys over here. Once again, at this point, it's optional. You can edit this however you want. 
um, but I'm just going to make sure just to select these guys over here and for proportional editing I'll just bring them a little bit closer in towards each other and I'll grab these guys over here kind of just bring them in a bit more go to frame one hit the space bar and I'll pause there for now what I'll do is I'll grab the shirt and I'll go over to the materials I'll grab the shirt and just under the viewport display I'll make that a bit darker in value and I'll just bring down the roughness as well so yeah what we could probably do to make this look better now that we're kind of have it more or less in place is we can go over to our physics and we can give it a higher quality so we can maybe make it 12 in the quality steps and under the um, self collision we can make the distance under the self collision 0 0.008 and we can come here to the quality steps under the collision and make it 5. So now if we go to frame 1 and we hit the space bar we can see that this is the simulations. It's looking a lot better now. Okay, so what happened was towards the end of my video when I was recording, my microphone cut out. So instead of having to start the whole tutorial again, I'll just kind of update you in onto what happened for the next five minutes because the tutorial was almost done when this happened. So I'll just quickly show you everything I did, okay? So first of all, um, just the obvious, I just with the materials, I just changed them in the viewport a little bit. Other than that as well, inside of here, I just deleted some of these faces here, but leaving the edges. Just an extra optional thing with the shirt um, sleeves here, and I made them a little bit shorter. That's optional, you don't have to do that, but it's the exact same sort of technique we use over here for the rim around the neck. So that's all I did over there. And then what I did, so the neck doesn't open up as much, okay, when this is simulating. What I did is I grabbed the character, and I went over to the physics. And under the collision, I took this um, friction amount down to three. And I could probably take it down even lower. So this shirt doesn't slide along with the shoulder as much in this example. Now that might not be an issue you face with your character, but in this case I did. So that's just something you can play around with. Another thing, um, I, um, I've already um, gone ahead and baked the case here. But um, what I did is I set my quality samples up to 12. And also under the collisions, I set my quality samples up there as well, okay? So that's all I kind of covered for the next five minutes uh, before the audio, the audio kind of cut out. So unfortunately, that is the situation. But um, whatever we were meant to cover, the main topic of making this advanced shirt, um, this is it. I think I've covered it and I will be uploading this final um, blend file here to my Patreon as well. So you can check that out in the description. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed learning how to make this um, shirt in Blender. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.